Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to share my experience, how I became, I was a FACO freak once upon a time and how I became a SIC savvy now. Of course, uh, this is my own observation. There is no comparison of any procedure of anyone. There is no intention to offend anyone and of course there is no financial obligation. So I've been practicing just for last 30 years and my generation, I think we have seen it all and done almost in evolution of cataract surgery, whatever is possible, of course, uh, not this, but right from ICC to ECC. But when it came to FACO emulsification, the learning curve was really, really steep, which always reminded me of the steepest uh, street of New Zealand. Um, um, but, uh, you know, the everything here, it was a quantum change in the way we used to do cataract surgery. Uh, everything was different. The machine mechanics were different. The uh, CCC, uh, we started doing it instead of can opener. The incision was different. Everything was uh, different. And we had to unlearn so many things uh, before we started uh, FACO emulsification. And uh, it was a lot of struggle because uh, we uh, promoted ourselves from ECC to FACO emulsification and uh, we thought that once we mastered that we thought that this is the ultimate and we just can't, they, there cannot be anything better than FACO emulsification. Much later SICS came in the picture. But I used to wonder where are the small incisions and why people call it as the small incision cataract surgery. I saw all the incisions very huge with large pockets, many crude instruments inside the antechamber and I thought, uh, this is not for me. So either I used to do ECC or I used to do FACO emulsification and I was the biggest critic of SICS at that time until one day, um, and of course, you know, anything which is very simple, it's very, very uh, difficult to digest the simplicity and it takes longer time. So for me, it was big no-no, but uh, unless one day, until one day, the SIC simply happened to me because they declared that there is the FACO machine is not working and the sutures are not available. And the patient insisted that I should do the surgery, uh, but I was very hesitant and I, uh, everyone, the, uh, the residents were telling that, ma'am, you are doing uh, FACO and what is a big deal? It's a simple surgery and do SICS, but I was holding back. Um, because I was a FACO surgeon, I didn't dare to make a big incision. So the incision became a very small frown incision outside that was 4 millimeter, but the inside was uh, 6 millimeter because I wanted to take out the nucleus uh, without emulsifying. But I didn't dare to make the pockets from the side. So the incision became like a funnel, the funnel of 6 millimeter by 3 millimeter by uh, 4 or 4.5 millimeter. Now, how to take out the nucleus? I put copious visco above and below, and I thought I will hold the nucleus with the uh, vectis. Uh, to my surprise, the one third of the nucleus uh, very easily came out. And the rest of the thing were very easy because the two third of the nucleus then came out very, very easily. I just crossed my fingers and uh, to see what happens next day and I was really stunned to see the first post-operative uh, result and I was surprised. What I did, I was, I, I didn't uh, like much but what it did to the patient, I was really impressed by that and after that there was no looking back. I tried the procedure in all type of cataracts, maybe a small pupil, a white cataract, brown cataract, black cataract and the result was the same. Then I thought maybe, you know, this is the anatomical consideration. You have the Y suture and one third of the nucleus very easily, whatever hard it is, it comes out easily if you fragment it in the funnel. And we are not doing anything in the antechamber so that we can save the cornea and posterior. So uh, this, is, uh, this is how um, my way of doing um, uh, small incision cataract surgery. Of course, I don't call it as a small incision cataract surgery. It's a sufficiently safe incision cataract surgery. Now I dare to call it as a universal gold standard because 
we can do the same procedure for any kind of cataract. Any kind of cataract, and that's how my way was born. And then there was no looking back. Now I started talking about it to everyone, and it was my even the premium surgery for premium patients with premium IOLs. And if you have something very simple, say for faster, easier, economical, elegant, which gives excellent visual outcome, and it's very relevant to today's times, which is the great severe and complex situations, which saves your time, saves money, saves you from a lot of stress of machines not working, apart from saving patients' vision, then why not? Around that time, I came across ISM SICS, and I thank Dr. Sahu and Dr. Boramani, who gave me the platform to express my views on this. We conducted a live uh, surgery and CME in our place. Uh, I started writing, I started analyzing my results. And almost around 10,000 cases retrospectively I analyzed to find very, very interesting observations. When I did the incision of 4 to 5 millimeter outside, it gave even the excellent multifocality. And what it needed was a very simple set. And the only disadvantage of that thing was, people were thinking that, oh, she was a FACO surgeon, now she has turned into a SICS surgeon. Uh, the companies were very upset with me because I was no longer buying machines. And the vitro retinal, my fellows were very upset because I was no longer dropping the nucleus. But what kept me going was conviction in this kind of procedure, the technique, and commitment to do it very consistently, and of course, a little common sense. I tell you, we have the experience. When we went from ECC to FECO, it was very difficult for us, and I think everyone should learn SICS because it is the best uh, way to go ahead. We all need to contemplate why we are doing what we are doing. And I think middle path is the way to wisdom. My mission in life has always been bringing smiles on the faces of many without losing mine. And this gave me the opportunity to serve many, many underprivileged people in and around my hometown. Uh, because I was doing SICS, it was accessible. Service is the expression of joy. And the blindness in our society, it's like an ocean. So whatever volume you do, it's less. But whatever you do, it does make difference to those underprivileged people. So don't you think it's the wiser, sensible, and practical approach to address the global uh, uh, blindness issue? Today, cataract surgery or the uh, manual small incision cataract surgery is a customized refractive procedure. But whether it is a funnel architecture, which is blessing in disguise, or it's the corneal stretching, I have many, many questions in front of me. How to get the predictable results? Whether it is a CCC, whether it is decentration, whether it is angle kappa, whether it is hydrophilic lenses, whether it is accommodation, the questions are many. Now my goal is to take this beautiful technique to the whole world, regaining the self-respect of SICS surgeon, raising their self-esteem, inspiring the young generation to learn this technique, pursuing the FACO surgeons to learn this, and working towards the standardization of techniques, and of course, evidence-based SICS and research. This has been the journey from head to heart. The journey from eye doctor to the real eye doctor, and journey now from wow to how. So the journey continues. Now, all these days, I was in wow with the technique, but now the journey continues with how. I would like to thank everyone which helped me throughout the journey, including my family. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Madhuri. And, uh